I'm Citra Abbott. I have five children from 16 down to seven. Um, I'm a stay-at-home mum. My oldest daughter is nearly 16. Um, my second child, my son, is 14. Then I have another son who is 12, a daughter who's 10, and finally a son who's seven. Originally I was a barrister and then I became a journalist, um, but as soon as I started having my children I, I gave up work to be at home with them. Giving up work to be at home with the children was never a conscious decision. It's very strange. It was a very organic thing, actually. Um, it just so happened when I gave birth to my first child. Uh, at six months I went back to work part-time because my husband was then working from home. And I, um, and that was, that was perfectly fine because I was very happy to leave her at home with my husband. And by the time I was pregnant with my second child, because there's an 18 month, there, was, there is an 18 month gap, I just didn't go back to work. I just felt just innately that I want to be at home with the children. It brought our income right down overnight and it was really, really difficult, but we didn't even talk about it. It was just what we did. It obliterated us. My husband had changed careers. He worked in the city before, but um, he had previously done an MA um, in journalism. So we had, so my older daughter had terrible colic. So for the first sort of three months of her life, so when she was from three months to six months, she had terrible colic that started at nine o'clock in the evening and went on till four in the morning. It was completely unmanageable for one person to deal with this colic of a baby crying for all those hours throughout the night. So we was the one that stepped up and she just said, look, use this opportunity to do something you really want and I will be there for you. I will help, I will help the baby financially. I will just give you, I mean, she doesn't have much, but she said, you will be okay. We will, together we'll work on this. So my husband was able to give up his job and start building his career as a journalist. So he started working from home when I went back to work part-time so our income was already you know decimated we have a two-bedroom flat it sounds impossible it sounds like a complete nightmare but it's worked and the kids they're normal kids and they can be very very difficult as you can imagine but they've really accepted it and they're they're very happy where they are I wish we had a big house with a huge garden but I don't regret the decisions I don't think I could have ever made any other decision um, to make sacrifices because of the children adds a little bit of humility, I think. And I think it's in making those sacrifices and having all the difficulties that my husband and I have had bringing up our children in, 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 in quite, diff well, in a way, in difficult circumstances, I think that's, that's made us as individuals. And I think... There are children, and I'm sure all mothers and, and fathers say this, it's incredible how you can have different children coming from the same family with such different personalities. Um, yes, so, so my 16-year-old coming up to 16, she's doing her GCSEs, and three, nearly four years ago, she developed postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, which is something I had never heard of, and it affects your heart, and it affects your circulation, and it is very, very debilitating. There are many people with POTS who do not work, who are housebound, who are in wheelchairs. And I think it, it, it does affect different people differently. And so she went from being, uh, she's a grade A student. She's very conscientious. The reason she's a grade A student, because it matters to her. Attendance has gone down to, I think, about 30%. She's very, very sick a lot of the time. She's in a lot of physical pain and she suffers constantly from migraine. So the problem stop her being who she wants to be. She had to grow through that. I think that's where it has been really important that I've been a stay-at-home mum, really, because I would never have thought, you know, that I would have to deal with, with issues like this. You think all you have to do is make sure kids get to school, get them into the right school. They have to do their GCSEs, their A-levels and go off to university. This never figures at all. So I'm glad that I was in a position where I could do all the hospital appointments, I could push for the diagnosis, I could fight with the hospital staff, I could get what I need for my daughter. Um, 
because I had the freedom to do that. I didn't feel I had to answer to my boss. I didn't feel like I know I've got this meeting to go to. My job's in jeopardy. It's going to affect the mortgage. It didn't affect any of that because we don't have anything anyway. But my income was never an issue because it, I don't contribute in that sense. Um, so it's been very important that I've been able to be there for her. You know what? It's still... It, Talking about what I do to people that I've just met or if we're in social circumstances, it, it's still a little bit difficult. It used to be impossible. So when I did, when I, when I, when I was out before and people would ask me, the first thing I said, well, I was a barrister and I was a journalist, but now I'm a stay at home mum. It was always like that. And it was, it was so ridiculous. And it was a practical thing that stopped me from saying that. I realized I couldn't keep saying well, I was a barrister and I was a journalist and now I'm a stay-at-home mum because I was a stay -at I've been a stay-at-home mum for longer than I was. Either. So I've, I've been forced into a position of having to just say, I'm a stay-at-home mum. And I've actually made myself say that. I don't talk about what I did beforehand. Um, I, it, it's a really conscious decision because I'm so desperate for people to understand that this is such a, a hard full-time job that's so important I don't believe my children would be who they are if I hadn't been able to stay at home and it's not because I I'm not a tiger mum I didn't make them who they are but I do think I have I have enabled them to have the confidence to be who they are and it is as simple as being there when they come home from school so when they come home from school and they drop their bags and they're moaning. That's so important to just be able, for them to be able to just let off steam, to have their dinner, to have me available for them whenever they want. And obviously the, the other side of it is that with five children, all you hear is mom, mom, mom. There's no peace. But when I can step back from it and it doesn't annoy me beyond belief, I can sort of think, and believe that actually that's nice, that's great. Whatever's on their mind and whatever they need to talk to me about, they can. They don't have to wait for me to get home late at night or wait for the weekend. I think that's really important because especially at the teenage age, which I've now got nearly three into, um, they seem to be quite spontaneous when it comes to things that are on their mind or if they have issues, it just comes to them and you almost have to catch it that's what I've realised with teenagers. You have to catch it. If you miss the moment, it's likely that they'll never mention it again. And I've found that, obviously I haven't caught every moment, but I have found that practically, that when they, I've had the mum, and it's been so random and out of context to whatever they're doing at that moment, I thought I've just caught that moment because that would leave their minds and it will never come back. So that's, I think that emotional support has been really important. I don't believe the government supports mothers like me. I think it's really interesting that I can honestly say that I'm totally on the receiving end of that. Um, the, the receiving end of, okay, the, 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 the financial consequences of choosing to be a stay-at-home mum. I mean, I find it very interesting that when my husband was uh, his salary was increased above a certain threshold. The conversation was really, okay, if I go, but you know if I go this way, we will be taxed even more. So actually it doesn't do much to our outgoings because our outgoings are growing all the time. But he suffers through promotion because I'm not working at all. And I find that really strange. Um, so having no tax breaks, um, not having the, oh, not having the, oh, th another thing is not having the child, that, that, that extra, that child benefit or the, you know, to, it, it does make a huge difference. He's obviously on the high rate of tax. He's on the high rate of tax, so we don't receive any benefits. So that sort of cuts that off. And that has really, really affected us. It's only a tiny bit of money. And I know that for many people, it doesn't mean anything, but when, I know what it means to me and my family looking at our weekly bills. You know, we don't, we don't, we're not on benefits. You know, my, as my husband works, he pays his taxes. And I just can't help feeling quite penalized making this decision. Whereas if I were to qualify for all these benefits, 
I think I'll be letting my children down. And I can't do that. So it's a question of wanting things to change, desperately wanting things to change, but not being forced, which I think the government is doing, not feeling forced to change my lifestyle or change my decisions, to be strong enough to know that we have made a decision that's very important to our family and no matter what the consequences of that were, are, we will not change our decision and I will not be forced into full-time work if I feel that I would benefit my family being at home. So you, you've recently joined Mothers at Home Matter, the mm. committee. Um, can you say why you did and what you hope? I didn't know, before I joined Mothers at Home Matter, I didn't know that it existed. And it was such a breath of fresh air to find that there was an organisation out there that supported mothers who stay at home. Um, because there's a lot of psychological pressure on mothers who stay at home. If you want me to start from, you know, st start at the beginning, there's a lot of psychological pressure. You do feel undervalued and you do feel as if you're being lazy. You know, a lot of my friends around me, actually, no, to be fair, a lot of the, my friends around me are in full-time work. They are, are doing amazingly in their careers, and that's great, that's their choice. Having said that, there are a number of friends I have who raised their children and then went into work. Um, I think the problem is the mothers who raised their children and went into work, of course, that was absolutely natural for them, and it's great because they have the time. They've done what they want and they've had the time, but I think even they felt the pressure of, of having to stop being stay-at-home mums. I think there is still an unwritten rule that, OK, fine, we'll let you be a stay-at-home mum, but at some point, when your child becomes a bit more independent, we expect you to go out to work. So there seems to be this invisible cut-off point, being a stay-at-home mum, if you want to do it successfully. Yes, I was a stay-at-home mum, but now I'm working because the children are, are slightly older. So I think there is still a pressure there. So having stay at a mothers at home matter, psychologically, that support means a lot because it does make you more confident at saying I'm a stay at home mum and these are the reasons. And what's quite interesting is as a stay at home mum, you innately know why you're doing it. You know how important it is. But because, but because the, um, the naysayers are so much louder, it's very easy as a mother to lose your confidence to be able to say, this is why I want to stay at home with my children. And it does silence you. So stay at Mothers at Home Matter, as an organisation, I think it helps give you that confidence when you read about what mothers at home are going through, um, what's happening to them, how they're being perceived by society, how you're not the only one in that position, it does give you a lot of strength. And I think, as, again, as I said, psychologically, sometimes when you are at home and the kids are creating and it's really, really difficult, it's very easy to think, I wish I, I should have just gone to work. I wish I were at work. Why am I doing this? And I do think a lot of the time that we have those feelings because society is telling us that's what we should have done in the first place. And it makes us less able to cope with being stay-at-home mums. And I think we need more support. You know, it is going to be hard. It's going to be really wretched sometimes, actually. But it's fine, and it's the right thing to do. And, you know, the kids are happy. You know, it, it, it is helping. It is helping. My mother is a retired social worker, and she said to me, uh, she said to me a while ago, actually, that if James and I divorced and I keep the children, I would be better off financially because I would get more state help than we're getting as a married couple with trying to sort of provide for ourselves and our family. It's, it's madness, absolute madness.